Hey guys, Crispy Bacon here with another Titan build for you. This one's going to be called God of Thunder. Let's take a look. The main synergies we'll be leveraging for this build will be Middle Tree Sunbreaker, also known as Code of the Devastator, along with the Dune Marcher's Exotic Legs, and then for weapons we'll be using a 1-2 punch shotgun, along with the Thunderlord Exotic Machine Gun. With this combination of items you can truly feel like Thor in Destiny 2, so let me show you why. The main thing I wanted to capture with this build is what it feels like to use Thor's hammer, also known as Mjolnir. And luckily, as a mid-tree Sunbreaker Titan, we get access to our thrown hammer as our melee ability. But that wasn't quite enough, so I paired it with the Dune Marcher's exotic legs, which can be acquired from any exotic drop source in the game. And for those who don't know, the Dune Marcher's exotic perk is called Linear Actuators. Increases sprint speed, sprinting builds up a static charge. After melee attacking an enemy, that charge will chain damage to nearby enemies. And what many don't know is that this actually works with our throwing hammer. So what this means is that we can sprint to gain linear actuators, throw our hammer at an enemy, that enemy will then be damaged and then chain arc damage to every enemy around it. We can then pick up that hammer and start the chain all over again. This leads to some seriously strong ad clear, even without using any ammo. And it really makes you feel like a badass version of Thor in Destiny. I gotta say, it's pretty cool. But again, that's just the beginning of this Thor build, so let's dive a bit deeper into all the moving parts and equipment that we'll need to set this up. So the first thing you may notice is that I'm actually using two special weapons, and that is possible with this build due to the fact that we're using our hammer throw so much, and then a few different elements that we'll talk about later in this build. All you need to know is that you don't need to worry about running out of special ammo, so feel free to use double special weapons. I happen to be running Mountaintop, which is a decent choice for PvE damage. But again, use whatever special weapon you're comfortable with, as long as you combo it with a 1-2 punch shotgun. For my shotgun, I'm using Prophet of Doom, which can be acquired from the Garden of Salvation raid. And again, the 1-2 punch shotgun means that when we hit every pellet in our spread, our next melee attack does more damage. And if raiding isn't your thing, that's okay. You can always farm for the one small step shotgun on the moon with Eris's crafting table, as long as you have the Shadowkeep DLC. But all that aside, this would not be a true Thor God of Thunder build without the Thunderlord exotic machine gun. This is seriously one of the most entertaining exotics in the game to use, and this build makes it so that we essentially never run out of ammo for this gun. For a true Thor experience, I kind of wanted to make it so that the Thunderlord felt like our primary weapon, and that we used it for the entirety of every activity. So with that in mind, let's talk about the mods that make this all work. So again, we'll want a full legendary set with the Dune Marcher's exotic legs. On our helmet, we'll want shotgun ammo finder and machine gun ammo finder. On our arms, we'll want machine gun loader and impact induction. On our chest piece, we'll want machine gun reserves and shotgun reserves. On our Dune Marcher's exotic legs, we'll want the oversized weapon dexterity mod and machine gun scavenger. And then on our Titan Mark, we'll want the heavy finisher mod and the hands-on mod. With this combination of mods, we will be finding a ton of ammo for our Thunderlord, and basically never running out. If we do run out of machine gun ammo, we can always use our heavy finisher mod, which means that when we use a finisher on an enemy with at least half of our super, we actually gain free heavy ammo. And this is actually a perfect combination with the hands-on mod, which means that whenever we get a melee kill, we'll actually gain extra super energy. And since most of the time we'll be throwing hammers and getting those melee kills, we'll be generating a lot of additional super energy, which we can then spend on getting more Thunderlord ammo. The other mod I wanted to mention really quickly was Impact Induction on our gauntlets, which means that when we cause damage with a melee attack, our grenade cooldown is actually reduced, and since we're using our hammer for the majority of every activity, we're also decreasing our grenade cooldown time, which makes us able to just kind of spam abilities and it feels really great. And as for the stats for this build, we want to prioritize mobility, discipline, and intellect. So we're basically raining down lightning on our enemies for the entirety of activities, we're throwing our hammers, and these hammers are chaining lightning to all nearby enemies. We're doing a lot of damage, and it's all very efficient. So how could this build get any better? Well, it really all comes down to some added synergies to the hammer itself, with the weapon choice we have, as well as the subclass. So as we talked about earlier, we are using a 1-2 punch shotgun. And what this means is that whenever we hit a full spread of shotgun pellets on an enemy, we actually gain 1-2 punch, which makes our next melee attack do more damage. So what we can do is shoot an enemy with the shotgun, gain 1-2 punch, and then we can either jump back and throw our hammer at the enemy we're already engaging, or we can actually throw our hammer at another enemy. Transferring this added damage into the throwing hammer is good in its own right, but then we need to think about the extra synergies that our subclass provides us. So with Code of the Devastator, we have access to the Roaring Flames perk, which means that kills with our solar abilities increase those abilities' damage, stacks up to three times. 
So as we are getting kills with our grenade and our hammer throw, we're actually building up stacks of roaring flames, which increases the hammer's damage. And then along with one-two punch from our shotgun, our hammer is doing a lot of damage. And if all of that was not enough for you, we actually have the perk Tireless Warrior, which means that after hitting an enemy with our throwing hammer, picking up the hammer triggers your health regeneration. So just so you understand, with this build, our throwing hammers are chaining our damage to enemies nearby, reducing our grenade cooldown with the impact induction mod, doing a ton of damage between one-two punch and roaring flames, on immediate cooldown if we pick it up after throwing it, giving us more super energy whenever we kill an enemy, and then on top of that, when we pick it up, it's also triggering health regeneration. If that is not one of the most devastating melee combos in the game, I really don't know what is. So the build's pretty good, it's a fun time, and you feel like Thor. And that's about it, right? Well, it turns out Bungo is actually a bit crazy. Because with Season of the Dawn, which starts next week, they actually decided to buff Middle Tree Sunbreaker. The Roaring Flames perk will be lasting longer, the throwing hammers will be doing more damage, and the pickup radius when you throw a hammer is actually going to be increased. And even though it's not particularly relevant for this build, the Burning Maul Super is actually going to be lasting a bit longer, and then light attacks will be using less energy, and the heavy attacks will have an increased energy cost, but they'll actually have a larger radius of kill potential. So you'd think, you'd think that would be it, right? But somehow it just keeps getting better. With the Season of Dawn, we are actually getting a new artifact known as Osiris's Lantern. And similar to this season's Eye of the Gate Lord, there are going to be mods that buff certain subclasses. And with this new artifact, there is a very high chance that we'll be seeing some solar subclass mods. So this build could get even better than it already is in the Season of Dawn, but we'll need to kind of stay tuned and see what these new mods are going to do. And also we need to make sure that a heavy ammo finisher mod is going to still be a thing, and if it's not, we'll need to replace it with something else. But even with the loss of the heavy finisher mod, uh, the ammo upkeep for the Thunderlord and everything else we use is pretty fine. It just kind of is a supplemental way to get some more heavy ammo. So we'll be good even without heavy finisher mods, so you can still use this build in Season of Dawn, and I expect it to get even better, so I really hope that you guys uh, give it a try. But anyways guys, that about does it for this build video. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end of the commentary here. I know there was a lot of chatter. If you want to see more of what I do, feel free to follow on Twitch, Mixer, and subscribe here on YouTube. Also join up on the Discord. We have a big community of people that share builds over there, and we'd be happy to have your input. But as always guys, I really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.
We thank you, Guardian. And we will never forget. <laughs>